Today I am standing in front of a Jaguar E-Type, widely regarded as one of the most beautiful cars ever made. <sighs> or is it? The Jaguar E-Type is the most beautiful car ever made. End quote. Well, I didn't say that. Apparently Enzo Ferrari did, and well, he wasn't exactly known for making ugly cars. But that's not what I'm here to debate today. What is the most beautiful car ever made, and why should this be in the conversation? A glimpse into the future. Winter on sunny southern beaches, and next summer north and south. The one problem I'm having here is, well, this beauty contest winner thing is a hard decision to make. Because let's be honest, anything from the 60s to come out of Europe was extraordinarily beautiful. These are going to be some tough contestants to beat. The likes of the Ferrari 275 GTB, the Mercedes 300 SL, the Asimar DB5, the Toyota 2000 GT, and the Lamborghini Miura. Wow, the list goes on and on. I mean, Christ, this was a golden era for design. But why? Well, the short answer is, is, well, this is an era that gave some of the most influential car designers their start. But more than that, what made their design so extraordinary is, well, they simply had no limitations, no restrictions to stop their boyish dreams from taking physical forms onto factory floors. You see, this was a time when, well, the extent of safety standards on, let's say, a Rolls-Royce grill wasn't really designed based on thinking if it would cheese grate a pedestrian on the way through an intersection. You see, the extent of, well, aerodynamics was based on, well, if it looked fast. Yeah, fast. Alright, but here's another problem with determining if, well, Enzo was right or not. I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? I mean, I don't look at every cute blonde that walks past me. Jerk! Uh, I mean, maybe I do. Alright, so I guess there's only one real way we can probably determine this. By eliminating opinion and applying logic. You see, there's a little guy named Da Vinci who actually had, well, a formula for this. A formula for beauty. It was called the Golden Ratio. Now it's said with this formula you can actually determine how beautiful someone or something is simply based on, well, the proportion of their features and therefore their symmetry. Or symmetry, I guess I'm in a British car, symmetry. Alright, so in this case, instead of measuring one's eyes and nose, we're going to be measuring, well, I guess, headlights and vents. All right, now to put it really simply, uh, basically it's known as the golden mean, AKA divine proportion, AKA the Greek letter meaning phi. It says here that phi occurs when you divide a line into two parts, then the longer part A is divided into the smaller part B, which are equal to the sum of A plus B, divided by A again, which both equal 1.618, AKA phi. Easy enough. <sighs> So I admit I am not the best with mathematics and I certainly don't know my way around a 
measuring tape. In fact, you really don't want to see me try to put up IKEA cabinets. It's a pretty sad sight to see. But you see, using a mathematical formula for beauty in car design really isn't such a silly thing. In fact, one of the most successful car companies for making beautiful machines ever uses the very same formula to design their cars. The car company's name is Aston Martin. Maybe you've heard of them, and well, I think they've done a pretty successful job thus far. What makes this car so beautiful in the first place? Well, for starters, it's simple and it's just classically beautiful in a non-ostentatious way only a British car could be. There aren't crazy vents, fins, and arms sticking out saying, look at me. And second, well, are its proportions. With an endlessly elongated front end leading to a bubbled cockpit and a short rear that seems to lack any intent of a trunk, it's just pretty. Last, it's curvaceous and doesn't have a single jagged corner that cuts. Rather, each edge disappears like the water that runs off the side of your neighbor's fancy pool. For me, this Jaguar E-Type is a very beautiful car, measuring and mathematics aside. But I'm afraid Enzo might have been wrong, even if he did say that. Because in my opinion, I don't know. Well, I guess we really didn't accomplish anything here. Alright guys, I've told you its story. Now let's walk around this particular car for sale. It's a 1967 Jaguar E-Type 4.2 with 13,300 miles on it. Now this is one of a few different variants you could get and obviously it's with V12, V6, a little bit of different body changes and one of the things to avoid are like American bumpers. They end up destroying it. This was a year before it got all ugly. This is a beautiful bumper. I mean, just look how these slope and pinch together. Uh, I mean, that's classic safety standards, I guess you could say, and they did it in an elegant way. So you really don't want the ugly bumpers. It's got the covered headlights, which is a huge plus. It's just a beautiful body. It's that 60s curvaceous, beautiful, simple, elegant, non-ostentatious body and it doesn't have all the bad bits from some of the other variants you can get. Now, you have a long front end for the engine, that beautiful little cockpit, bubble cockpit, as I said, and then this short rear with a hatchback style trunk almost. But I mean, just look at it, it is absolutely stunning. And then of course, you have the wire wheels, and this one's finished in a really nice maroon metallic black interior. You have that nice worn leather, beautiful steering wheel, all the little knobs and switches makes you feel like you're in an old fighter jet and it just smells, just smells nice and old. It's also not a very hard clutch to use. It's a very relaxed, luxurious car to drive. It's not like the old Ferraris that just kill your leg. But what's really cool about this, as I said, is it doesn't look like it has a trunk at all, but you pop this and you end up actually seeing a full hatchback. Let's check it out. Now going to the rear trunk, obviously it's completely untraditional. It opens sideways, which just looks insane. A piece of your car is literally floating off to the side and it reveals quite a large trunk. Now I said it was a really short wheelbase, uh, but surprisingly you have tons of room for your 1960s Louis Vuitton luggage. Speaking of weird hinges, now we're at the front, the engine hood, or should I say, sorry, the bonnet. And this one is just as weird as that one. And notoriously, these are the cringe-worthy opening bonnets because, well, it looks like it's about to scrape the ground. It's insane. And it just adds for such a crazy effect. I mean, it's a massive piece, as I said. Now that reveals a very clean six-cylinder all right guys, so that is it. The Jaguar E-Type. One of the most beautiful cars ever made? I don't know, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. God, that's corny. 
Anyway, let me know what you think the most beautiful car ever made is, but in the meantime, I just want to give Symbolic International a massive thank you for letting me film this amazing car today. And by the way, check out the rest of the collection here. This is a YouTuber's wet dream. And guys, if you want to see me on more things, please follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. If you want to see what type of equipment I use, check the Amazon links below. Guys, if you like the video, give it a like. If you want to see more of my content, please do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.